Hey everyone, welcome back to 996 The Howl, the doozy, the doozy. What a huge, huge shakeup by Bill Armstrong and company for the Utah Hockey Club. Good morning to everyone who woke up to this trade of Sergachev, Mikhail Sergachev from the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for JJ Moser, Connor Geeky, a 2025 second, and today's a seventh round pick that usually doesn't matter what a what a huge trade honestly this this is an initial reaction it's raw obviously with these types of trades you got to just sit down and soak it in a bit more off the bat uh you got to remember that Sergachev is only 26 years old because when I saw this trade I'm like really we're gonna have Sergachev for seven years and he's like 30 years old he's already played seven years in the NHL but he's still 26 so you literally got him for his prime years from 26 to 33 a great defenseman for the Tampa Bay Lightning he gets paid eight and a half million dollars per year the highest paid player for Utah already I thought Bill Armstrong wouldn't do this just acquire a player that's already the most expensive player the next closest is Keller at like 7.1 million, I believe. Uh, Connor Geeky, most I would have been okay, even though I like Barrett Hayden more than Connor Geeky, I would have been okay if it was Hayden and Moser and then the picks. For Geeky, it's like that was a sort of center depth guy that was just coming in to the American Hockey League. Sure, you literally just replaced him yesterday with the pick of Cole uh, Baudouin. Uh, maybe we uh, say Baudouin instead of the French sort of accent there. Not sure just yet. A lot of people call him Kobo. So maybe I'll call him Kobo from now on. But back to Geeky. He was projected to be maybe a second line center, but for sure a third line center. Plays hard, competitive, lit up the WHL last season. It's a huge, huge prospect to give up. But in Sergachev, you're getting an excellent skater, an NHL veteran at 26 years old, two Stanley Cups, a bunch of finals appearances, a bunch of conference finals appearances. He knows what it takes to win. He's been around a winning locker room. He averages about 22 to 23 minutes per night. He's a minute muncher. He's reliable. He probably won't score more than 10 goals. His career high is 10 goals, and that's on a team loaded like the Tampa Bay Lightning. So maybe you see him around the high single digits, 8, 9, 10, or 11 goals. Like I said, they have him for his prime. I feel like he still hasn't reached his ceiling at 26 years old. There could, and it's a very high probability, his best years are ahead of him. Maybe you're looking at some Norris nominations in the next few years, but immediately becomes our best defenseman, a reliable defenseman. He's a big body too, 6'3", 216 pounds. He plays with that physical edge, which none of our defensemen did. Um, for Moser, he was, ne he was never going to be that offensive defenseman, even though I love him being that steady, reliable sort of two-way defenseman, but that other way of offense isn't really there. To me, Moser seems like Marino to me. Marino and Moser are sort of the same. Maybe Marino gets the extra edge uh, in terms of skill and offensive upside than Moser, but I liked Moser. I think Tampa Bay did a great job here. Now they could sign Stamkos and sign uh, Victor Hedman as well. Hopefully, I'm sure Bill Armstrong and company love Sergachev. Immediately helps his team's blue line. He's like, like I said, 26 years old. He's a veteran D-man that we don't have to wait for. You inject him into the lineup, he knows how to play. No development. He's just going to make your blue line way, way, way better. Instead of if we just hung on to Moser, it wouldn't have made our defense better. But again, the prospect of Geeky, now you're going to have to wait two more years for that Cole Baudouin to come in and replace where Geeky already had two years of development. So it's a, it's hard to say goodbye to Geeky, but I know once the season starts, we're going to be like, oh my God, Sergachev, we're, we haven't seen a caliber of this defenseman in over a decade. Then we go to John Marino, acquired from the New Jersey Devils, traded for two second round picks. I love how Utah is giving away picks so I don't have to have a humongous prospect board whenever I do prospect reports. Uh, they get John Marino and a 2024 fifth round pick, so that's today. His contract is three years, $4.4 million. 
So richer than what we would have gave Moser. I think Moser would have got between three and four million dollars. He'll cap out at about five to ten goals. If he gets ten goals, that's extremely good for Utah. He's 27 years old, so he's one year older than Sergachev, but he's only played five NHL seasons, whereas Sergachev, the year younger, and has played seven years in the NHL already. Marino's a right-handed shot defenseman, averages 21 minutes a night, a great two-way defenseman. Needs a little bit more of that offensive flair, but great in his own end. Another excellent skater. So Bill Armstrong just got himself two excellent skating defensemen with some good size, not shying away from using their size. Plays good in their own end. So, I mean, this is great for the blue line, but right now it's just hard. You get so attached to these prospects like Geeky. I liked Moser too. Just sort of stalled a little bit for me, Moser did. Uh, in the first year, he was incredible, and I was so excited to see him progress, but he didn't really progress and just became that sort of fourth, fifth number defenseman, not a top pair guy at all. Maybe you could shelter him on a second pairing, but uh, yeah, I'm sure once the season starts, some other trades as well will probably happen, maybe some free agent signings for the decor, but you're looking at a Sergachev, Dursey, Marino, maybe a, a Kessel ring, maybe Soderstrom makes the jump. And then in the future, you got Lamoureux and uh, Simishev, maybe Simishev and Sergachev, they're both Russian. Maybe it helps Simishev and Daniel Boot, who's also Russian, acclimate better to Utah. He could be sort of that mentor figure for the two big Russians Utah draft, well, Arizona drafted last draft. So that's it. Uh, show your thought. It is a huge trade. Uh, show me your thoughts. What do you think? Is it good? Is it bad? It could be whichever. Uh, it's hard right now to, di to digest, but a huge trade nonetheless. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, spread the word. And as always, thank you for your support.